Eighth grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit eight, lesson eight, finding unknown side lengths. Problem number one, find the exact value of each variable that represents a side length in a right triangle. Remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we can use h squared plus eight squared equals 10 squared. Since 8 squared is 64 and 10 squared is 100, the equation now reads 8 squared plus 64 equals 10. To find out what h squared is, we can subtract 64 from 100. 100 minus 64 is 36, so h squared equals 36. What's the square root of 36? 6. So the length for h is 6 units. Let's find another missing side length. Again, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, we're going to use k and six. So k squared plus six squared equals c squared, or in this case, 6.5 squared. Since six squared is 36 and 6.5 squared is 42.25, now the equation reads k squared plus 36 equals 42.25. We need to subtract 36 from 42.25 to figure out what k squared is. 42 and a quarter minus 36 equals 6.25. Now we know that k squared is 6.25 units. What's the square root of 6.25? The square root of 6.25 is 2.5. So the side length k is 2.5 units. Let's find another missing side length. We can use m squared plus two squared equals five squared. Since two squared is four and five squared is 25, the equation now reads m squared plus four equals 25. We need to subtract four from 25 to figure out the length of m squared. 25 minus four is 21. So we know that m squared is 21 units long. What's the square root of 21? Approximately 4.8. So we know that the side length m has a length of approximately 4.8 units. Let's find another missing side length. We can use n squared plus the square root of 10 squared equals 10 squared. Since the square root of 10 squared is 10 and 10 squared is 100, the equation now reads n squared plus 10 equals 100. To find the value for n squared, we need to subtract 10 from 100. 100 minus 10 is 90. So we know that n squared equals 90. What's the square root of 90? The square root of 90 is 9.7. So we know that the missing side length for n is 9.7 units long. Let's find the last missing side length. We can use p squared plus the square root of 68 squared equals the square root of 85 squared. Since the square root of 68 squared is 68 and the square root of 85 squared is 85, the equation now reads p squared plus 68 equals 85. To find the value of p squared, we need to subtract 68 from 85. 85 minus 68 equals 17. That means that p squared is 17. What's the square root of 17? Approximately 4.1. So the missing side length of side length p is approximately 4.1 units. Do something nice. Like this video, say something in the comments, tell a friend about this channel, and hit that thanks button. Problem number two, from eighth grade unit eight, lesson seven. A right triangle has side lengths of A, B, and C units. The longest side length has a length of C units. Complete each equation to show three relations among A, B, and C. A. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, or C squared is equal to B squared plus A squared. B. A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared. C. 
B squared equals C squared minus A squared. Problem number three from eighth grade unit eight lesson seven. What is the exact length of each line segment? Explain or show your reasoning. Each grid square represents one square unit. A, line L. Well, this looks like line L is exactly four units in length. B, side length M. I can turn this into a right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem. We have a side length of two and a side length of four. So we can do two squared plus four squared equals C squared, or in this case, M squared. Two squared is four and four squared is 16. Four plus 16 equals C squared. So we know that C squared is equal to 20. What's the square root of 20? Approximately 4.475. So we know that side length M is approximately 4.475 units. To give an exact length, we can just say that the side length M is equal to the square root of 20. C has line Q. I've also turned this into a right triangle. We have a side length of four and a side length of five. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to help find the missing side length, side length Q. 4 squared plus 5 squared equals C squared, or in this case, Q squared. 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. So 16 plus 25 equals C squared, or again in this case, Q squared. So we know that 16 plus 25 is 41, so C squared or Q squared is 41. What's the square root of 41? approximately 6.5. So the side length for line Q is approximately 6.5 units. However, they ask for an exact length. So the exact length would be the square root of 41. Problem number four from eighth grade unit seven lesson 15. In 2015, there were roughly one times 10 to the power of six high school football players and two times 10 to the power of three professional football players in the United States. About how many times more high school football players are there? Explain how you know. I can represent this information as a ratio. One times 10 to the power of six over two times 10 to the power of three. Let's focus on the one and the two. That's the same as a half. I can represent that half as 0 0.5. And 10 to the power of six over 10 to the power of three is equal to 10 to the power of three. Now the expression reads 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of three. I can solve this mentally by simply making the 0.5 10 times greater. That would become a five but I have to make 10 to the power of three 10 times smaller so that I don't change the value. 10 times smaller than 10 to the power of three would be 10 to the power of two. So five times 10 to the power of two. I know that 10 to the power of two is 10 times 10 or 100, and five times 100 is 500. This means that there were about 500 times as many high school football players compared to the number of professional football players in 2015. Problem number five from eighth grade unit seven, lesson six. Evaluate A, one half to the power of three. That's the same as one half times one half times one half, which is equivalent to one over eight or one eighth. B, one half to the power of negative three. That's the same as one over one half to the power of positive three, which is equivalent to one divided by one half to the power of three. Just like above, one half times one half times one half equals one eighth. But now we have one over one eighth. And that means one divided by one eighth, or how many times does one eighth go into one whole? And that answer is eight. For example, eight eighths or eight over eight is equal to one. How many eighths are in eight eighths? Eight. Problem number six from eighth grade unit six, lesson six. Here is a scatter plot of weight versus age. 
for different Dobermans. The model represented by y equals 2.45x plus 1.22 is graphed with the scatter plot. Here, x represents age in weeks, and y represents weight in pounds. A. What does the slope mean in this situation? The slope is being multiplied by x. In this case, the slope is 2.45, and that means that the Dobermans can be expected to gain 2.5 pounds per week. B. Based on this model, how heavy would you expect a newborn Doberman to be? Since the y-intercept is 1.22, I would expect a newborn Doberman to weigh 1.22 pounds at birth. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video and hitting that thanks button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.